All right, so check this out. How sweet is that? Hey, what's up guys? Randy Rector here back at you with another video. And in today's video, we're gonna control our Line 6 Helix using a sheet music app and MIDI. Now this can also work for your Kemper, Axe FX, or other synthesizers. Now this technology is nothing new, it's old. In fact, I just looked it up, it's 37 years, 10 months, and 15 days old. This came out in the 80s, but man, is it ever cool tech. And I just learned how to use it on my Helix, so it's super exciting for me. A few different options for connectivity. This is option number one, this is what I've been using recently. This is the Yamaha MD BT01. This is a Bluetooth connection, so this goes into your Helix, there's an in and an out, they go into your Helix, and then you connect to this over an app. So option number two is something like this. This is a five pin in and out MIDI connection to USB with a little interface on it. So this is a, a MIDI interface, it's a Roland UM1. Again, this is super old, uh, and so I was actually having trouble getting drivers that would work for this on Catalina, so something to consider. But of course, most devices these days will have a USB cable. This is USB type B, uh, and that'll go into the back of the Helix. So for this example, we're gonna use these guys. Plugging into these is actually pretty straightforward. You, could, you just need to make sure that the arrows go the right direction. Once that's plugged in, you need to connect your iPad to the Bluetooth device. The app that came with that device is this. It's really janky and it barely works. I was able to get it to work one time and I haven't been able to get it to work since. And a guy on Reddit said, if you get another um, audio app that has MIDI capability from Yamaha, it should work as well. So I found this one that says Yamaha Viz Performer. This is basically all this app does. I don't really understand why you would want this, but if you go in the bottom corner here, click that, click Bluetooth MIDI device, it will see the, um, the device there and you just click and it'll connect. And then once that's done, you can exit out and go into your sheet music program and it will be all set up. One quick note is that I actually took these out to a gig. We went crazy, cooped up, but went along. Used them one time uh, so far. And for whatever reason, when I went up to play after soundcheck, we did our first song, went to the second song and it didn't change my patches the way I'd expected. I'm not sure if the app disconnected or if it fell asleep or uh, maybe I took the tablet too far away from this device. I'm not really sure what happened. Um, before I knock these, I'm gonna give it a few more tests and see if I can figure out what I did wrong that caused it to do that and give you a bit more of an update later on. Okay, so now we need to jump into the music software and actually send that program change. To do this, I'm gonna use Fourscore. And now I've tried this on OnSong as well and it does work in OnSong. I'm sure it will work in most music apps on your iPad. In Fourscore, there's two different ways that we can do this. One is we can actually go into the metadata of a song and under the MIDI tab, you can create a program change. So that means every time that this chart is opened, no matter if you open to the first page or the last page or somewhere in the middle, it's gonna send a program change to your device. The second thing that you can do is you can create a button that means when you press the button, it's gonna send a MIDI signal. So one is a bit more automated, one you have control of. All right, so let's take this song here, looking out my back door, for instance. Let's go ahead and add a program change that's gonna open up this patch here on my Helix. Now, when we set up a program change, the first box that it's gonna give us here is channel number. Now, channel number refers to the channel that you want to use to communicate to a certain device. So every device you have, you can assign its own unique channel number. I chose four just because I didn't want it to be one, uh, because if I got a new piece of gear and it's one, I don't want them to both try to talk to the same channel. So I set arbitrarily just to number four. So to do that, you just basically press this, go to global and toggle over to the MIDI selection here and down in the left corner, you can select the different channel that you'd like it to be. So mine is four, yours can be whatever, it doesn't really matter, but um, when you're setting the program change, you have to make sure that you have it set to the right device. The second box here is MSB, which is most significant bit. I don't think that actually affects the Helix at all. I can't really figure out how to make it affect the Helix. Um, if you guys know what this does in relation to the MIDI controls in the Helix, let me know. After that, we've got LSB. Now this is least significant bit, so this is gonna refer to what folder or what set list you wanna pick from. So you can have this go to your, your factory default set lists or any custom set list that you've made after that. In this case, we're using number six, and you can see that right down here on the bottom left corner with that 006. And finally, we have velocity. Velocity is gonna determine which preset we actually pull from. Just be mindful that the first one in your set list is 000. The second one is 001. 
kind of annoying, but you can actually just look over here again and it's gonna show you exactly what number that is. So there should be no confusion. And that's about it. Now when I go to that score, boom, you see it update. All right, real quick, I'm just gonna show you how to do buttons. So basically you go to the top right corner here, select buttons, and then you can add a MIDI button, put it wherever you want. And then we're just gonna add a program change to that. Super simple, it's the exact same numbers that you're gonna put in there and then that will work. All right, let's talk about some of the pros and cons, then we'll get into some additional features. But let's start with some of the cons because there's actually something to consider here. If you set up your score to automatically send that signal the way I have mine set up, one thing to consider is if you, let's say you tap your page turner pedal too many times and you go to the wrong score, well, your tone is gonna instantly change to that score's tone. So, you know, if you finish a song and you're letting that last chord ring out, you tap next song, your, your tone's gonna change. And if you're using multiple outputs, your, your tone's gonna completely disappear. So that's something, that's kind of a win for buttons that way that you could actually tab to the next song and then see your song, kind of get your head in that mindset and then press the button when you're ready. Buttons are definitely gonna give you a little more control, but it is pretty sweet to have everything automated. So I'm gonna try it out for a little while. I'm gonna try both of them, the buttons and the kind of auto send and see if I can get used to, uh, to either one. I would prefer to have the automated one, but we'll see, we'll see if it works. And another con, which we've kind of already talked about, is that it crapped out on me on my first gig. So I don't have too much faith in the Bluetooth connection working too well. I'd prefer something hardwired, but we'll see how that goes. All right, let's talk about the pros. So it's insanely cool. That's, I mean, that's the coolest part. Uh, second thing, it's really, really convenient. I, I don't know if you've ever tried to use a Helix outside in the sun, but the screen is notoriously hard to read. So this actually makes it pretty sweet. You press next song, your pedal board changes, you don't even need to look down. Generally speaking, it's a hands-free experience, especially if you're using one of these, a page turner pedal. So you can actually just fire to the next song and it just, it just works. Um, what I would recommend is if you're gonna go out and buy one of these, get one that has two, sorry, three or more pedals. The reason being is if you wanna go the button route, so you wanna have the buttons that control your presets, you can actually control them with these. You just lose the ability to go left and right. And then you can use the third trigger to send that signal to your Helix. And you can also use the Helix itself to turn pages. If you're comfortable killing some of your, your switches, you'll you know, you obviously lose two or one if you're really brave and just want to forward. If you're comfortable doing that, that's, that's always an option too. And then what's kind of cool about that is you press a button on your Helix to go into the next page, that feeds to your iPad. And then as soon as that opens, it sends another signal to your Helix to tell your Helix to change the patch. So. That's pretty cool. All right, guys, well, that is it for me. I hope that this video was exceptionally helpful for you. And if it was, please feel free to click that like down below. It really does help me out. And I've been thinking about the next video that I wanted to make. And I was thinking about doing a, like a preset video, like building a preset from start to finish. And then I was thinking that's so subjective and what I like is probably totally different than other people. So uh, I was thinking maybe it'd be cool to kind of go over old songs like, you know, Brown Eyed Girl intro or don't Stop Believing Solo or something like that, all these kind of classic riffs and see if we can build them really fast. Like, you know, a two minute video kind of covering the whole process to build it. If that sounds like something that you'd be interested in, please feel free to throw a thumbs up down in the comment section and I will know to go ahead and make something like that. And I probably will anyways, because it sounds like a lot of fun. Anyways, that's it for me. We'll see you guys next time.